John Locke. Now, we've already looked at Hobbes, we've looked at, um, you know, before that we looked at Machiavelli, and we've examined the turn, as it were, towards uh, modern political philosophy. But nobody encapsulates modern political philosophy, in my opinion, or in at least mainstream ideas about governance and uh, society as much as uh, John Locke, who is a 17th century political philosopher, also considered just generally a philosopher of empiricism and also considered sometimes, you know, to have written on political economy, that is on economics. He lived from 1632 to 1704 um, and in uh, relation to Thomas Hobbes, uh, his writing sort of, uh, his writings influence and are influenced in turn by the glorious revolution of 1688. What that glorious revolution of 1688 was, uh, was that um, in 1648, the parliament had overthrown the king. The son of the king came back and overthrew the parliament. And then finally, in 1688, the House of Commons and the royalists came to an agreement and said, And that's how England got its constitutional monarchy which is basically that it has a constitution, but it also has a monarchy, and everybody's always going crazy about Prince Williams. William? What's name of his name? He's been here for a Hollywood actress. What's his name of Hollywood actress? Ka? Sorry? Prince? Harry. Harry. Harry met Sally. And who's been here? Meghan. Meghan Markle? Okay. Oh, let's see. Everyone knows. I don't know, but I don't know. So everybody in England is crazy about, they treat their royalty much like we treat Imran Khan. He can, they can do no evil. Um, we lack a royalty, that's why you know, we had to construct one. Um, anyway, so it is the glorious revolution of 1688, which brought together the parliament as well as uh, the royalty into an arrangement whereby the royalty would also remain and parliament would also remain. And the real theorist of that glorious revolution is this man here, John Locke. Now, as I've already told you, he's a philosopher, he's also a physician, and if there's anyone that can be considered the father of modern liberalism or classical liberalism, it would be John Locke, which is why, of course, I said that he is really the fountainhead of Desi libtards. Sorry, I shouldn't use that term, uh, uh, Desi liberals. Um, he is also the father of British empiricism, empiricism being the idea in philosophy that everything that we know, we know from our, uh, from our uh, experience, from our senses. Uh, one, he is one of the most influential of the Enlightenment thinkers, um, and of course his social contract theory is the social contract theory that we today accept to be, um, uh, you know, uh, sort of the main sort of school of thought. Uh, but he's also very much um, known for his writings on philosophy, that is epistemology, the theory of knowledge, on economics and on political philosophy. He in turn has influenced incredibly influential people like Voltaire, like Rousseau and also the Scottish Enlightenment and you might even be surprised to discover that he had a very big influence on the American revolutionaries and in fact on the writing of the US Declaration of Independence. For Locke, as opposed to Hobbes, if you remember from Hobbes, the state of nature was one that was nasty, brutish, and it was short. It was a situation, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It was a situ situation where there was war of all against all. But for John Locke, this is not the case. He says, if you remove the state, ye koi zururi baat nahi hai ki har banda jo hai wo aapas mein pagalon ki tarah lade aur sir taimur rahman ne jo argument di thi ki bacche aapas mein ladte hain they are after all bachas bacche to aapas mein ladenge but when you talk about adults if you leave the room and you have a group of adults they are not going to start you know hitting each other with things and start doing you know silly things like that they are know how to conduct themselves why is it that in the state of nature we don't start killing each other, we don't start slitting each other's throats, we don't start coming into a war of all against all. He says because we are governed, even when we are not governed by a law that is created by the state, by a legal juridical law, we are nonetheless governed by a law of nature. And that law of nature is that no one ought to harm another in his life, health, liberty or possessions because all men desire mutual love. They want to be loved and they want to love in turn. 
Uh, he's a bit of a touchy, feely, lovey, dovey, tree hugging liberal. So he thinks all men desire love. And uh, yeah, but yes, but sometimes conflict can occur. <laughs> but uh, do you remember this movie called uh, what was the, uh, this movie called uh, Fight Club? Has anybody seen Fight Club? Okay, so in Fight Club, this guy goes absolutely crazy and he starts imagining himself uh, as this big fighter and this really sexy sort of dude. Uh, you know, that's basically, bad. he begins to imagine himself as Brad Pitt. And um, then he puts together a team of people and he says to them, what I want you to do is I want you to go and pick a fight with anybody, just for any reason. So, a person is giving water to his एक बंदा सांस से गुजरता है उसके ऊपर पानी गिरा देता है जानबूझ के पानी गिरा देता है क्यों ताकि उसके साथ लड़ाई शुरू हो जाए एक बंदा कॉफी लेके जा रहा था उसकी कॉफी गिरा देता है क्यों ताकि लड़ाई शुरू हो जाए एंड ही सेज टू हिज हिज पीयर्स ही सेज टू हिज फॉलोअर्स के यू विल सून डिस्कवर दैट एक्चुअली मैन इज क्वाइट रिस्क अवर्स एंड दे विल नॉट फाइट इन फैक्ट यू विल बी शॉक्ड टू डिस्कवर दैट यू नो शायद दे मे सॉर्ट ऑफ बुरा भला मुंह से आपको कहेंगे बट दे it will take a lot for you to actually begin a fight why because fights are risky uh, and you can get hurt in a fight very easily and uh, people don't want to take risk in fact people don't want to get into a situation where they encounter pain or they can potentially encounter pain yes main yahi aage joke marne ja raha tha ki fight club if it was made in pakistan would have had a very different ending <laughs> but be that as it may um, i think the point nonetheless may be valid maybe we are super hyped up to fight because you know if you've been driving through traffic and traffic is terrible uske baad waisi aapka para chada hota hai koi aake aapko yun ghuri bhi kara deta hai aap kehte hain bas sari jo zindagi ki frustration hai is bande pe maine kusoon maar ke nikalni hai so you know uh, so maybe it's the case that we're already quite revved up because of the situation but if that were not the situation if we had really existed in a state of nature where things were relatively calm we lived with nature we lived in nature um it was not necessary that we would we would we would just break out and start fighting like crazy and i think uh, one of the presentations on thomas hobbes also pointed out that look societies if you if you look at anthropology you look at history you know that societies have existed without the state and it's not that they started fighting and killing each other for instance the american indians the red indians they didn't have a state as such right they didn't have you know a government or a state in the in the sense that we think of the state today um and yet it's not the case that the red indians were constantly sit, slitting each other's throats the aborigines of australia we know about they didn't have a state they were not slitting each other's throats we know about the tribes that have existed in balochistan and in far away places in interior sindh and khyber pakhtunkhwa and so on and so forth where there is no presence of the state at all and yet they are not slitting each other's throats we know also of uh, you know african tribes shaka zulu and ex- so many other great african tribes that ex- well shaka zulu was more or less a state but we know of many african tribes that existed without a state and they live pretty much peacefully it's not the case that they every tribe that existed without a state was fighting each other and then there is also the the paradox that if we are if we are inevitably going to fight each other without a state then how did the state come about the argument that the state comes up about out of self preservation seems a bit weak since why wouldn't self preservation then just get people not to kill each other in the state of nature right if self preservation is the only issue then they should just stop killing each other like john locke says so Locke continues the offender declares himself to live by another rule than that of common reason and equity and so becomes dangerous to mankind so it's not the case that people will not fight each other there may be some people who offend the law of nature and say okay oh i'm going to take this and i'm going to take that and i'm going to you know uh, 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 declare war on my fellow man etc or mai usse chhin lunga flani cheez so it may be the case that some people and even in the state of nature may break the law of nature but by doing so they automatically put themselves up in opposition to everybody else uh, and also to common reason and equity so uh, that therefore means that by violating the law of nature the law of equity the law of this this uh, common reason uh, they in fact give society the right to punish those who violate the law of nature if i if we all lived without a state 
and I stole something that belonged to you or I did you some wrong and then you said sir has done me wrong he took something of mine that be ought to have belonged to me uh, you know or he I was walking down the this you know the the corridor and sl sir came along and patah slapped me on the back of my head for no rhyme or reason well what would all of you say you well you probably go f and bad mouth me first and foremost um, but aside from that you'd all say you know what uh, sir has done you wrong you have the right and we all have the right now to punish sir for his transgression mainly by going on ldf and saying bad things about him um, so what that means is that when somebody breaks the law of nature, he or she gives society the right, therefore, to punish them. And this thing happens, these things happen normally. Even in tribal society, where there is no state, you have a tribe, or in hunter-gatherer, pastoralist societies, where one person is seen to violate the law. So, sare milke usko kehte hain, tune bada galat ki hai, badi buri harkat ki hai. It even happens in groups of friends, right? I mean, agar aap sare yahan pe baithe hain aur kisi ne koi badi buri harkat ki, to sare usse kahenge ki yar ye tune bahut hi ghatiya kisam ki harkat ki hai, aise to karna nahi chahiye tha, wagaira wagaira, right? Um, and you see that you don't need the state, you don't need the policeman to come and tell you that, says John Locke. So where the law of nature is violated, Locke says, a common injury is done. And the individual or individuals who have been damaged as the right to have the right to seek reparations for him that has done it. So uske paas ye haq ho jata hai ke bhai mere saath zyaati hui hai, ab mere saath jo zyaati ki gai hai, wo puri ki jai. Passionate heat or boundless extravagance against a criminal instead of common reason and proportionate punishment to transgression, however, also become possible. So it may be the case that you have done some small and bad things, but when you have done some bad things, it is possible that you have become a famous personality or an infamous personality, and when you have done some bad things, which is not the case, then you have become a famous personality or an infamous personality. اور یہ بھی ممکن ہے کہ ایک بندے کو زیادہ پنشمنٹ مل جائے دوسرے بندے کو کم پنشمنٹ مل جائے ایک بندے کو چھوٹی سی سزا کے لیے اتنی بڑی چھوٹی سی گناہ کے لیے اتنی بڑی سزا مل جائے دوسرے بندے کو ایک بہت بڑے گناہ کی کو سزا ہی نہ ملے Thus every man in the state of nature has the power to kill a murderer both for deference as well as for security The law of nature allows it کہ if I am going to try and commit murder against you you have the right to stop me from committing murder. But there is a problem in the state of nature. And that problem is, let no man be a judge in his own case. Please write that down. It's a beautiful phrase. And it's the crux of why um, John Locke thinks um, state of nature doesn't work. He says, it is unreasonable for men, and we can extend this to women as well, to be judges in their own cases. That self-love will make men partial to themselves and to their friends. I love myself. An injury to me always feels like an injury that is far more exaggerated than an injury to somebody that I don't know. Or an injury to one of my friends or my wife or somebody I love or my children will seem to me to be far more, it will hurt me emotionally and it will seem to be very, very big for me. Or my heart will say, right? حق مل جائے کہ میں نے ہی دوسرے کی سزا مقرر کرنی ہے اور کسی نے لیٹ سے زارہ کو ایمین چپیڑ کرا دی یا بتمیزی کر دی تو میں تو کہوں گا اس کا ہاتھی کاٹ دو میں کہوں گا اس کو پھانسی چڑھا دو کیونکہ مجھے اپنی بیٹی سے اتنا پیار ہے تو میں کہوں گا کہ اس بندے کو معاف ہی نہیں کرنا اور ہو سکتا ہے کہ ایم ویری ویری یو نو جیڈیشیس اور ایسے نہیں نہیں اس کی اتنی سزا بنتی اس کو بھی ایک چند کرا دو مگر لائکلی ہوڈ یہی ہے کہ جب میں اپنے کیس میں کوئی فیصلہ کروں گا تو میں چاہوں گا کہ اگلے کو سخت سے سخت کڑی سے کڑی سزا جو ہے وہ سنائی جائے اور اگر کوئی ایسا بندہ ہو جس کا جس کے بارے میں مجھے کوئی پرواہ نہیں تو میں کہوں گا ایم ایڈونٹ ریلی کیئر اور آن دی ادر سائیڈ دیٹ از نیچر پیشن اینڈ ریونج ول کیری دیم ٹو to you know extremes punishing others and hence nothing but confusion and disorder will follow and that therefore God had suddenly appointed government to restrain the partiality and violence of men so self-love means that you should not be a judge in your own case or you should not be a judge in the case of your friends because uh, you are liable to to punish that person far greater than than that person deserves 
This kind of stuff can happen on social media, for example. On social media, अगर आपने किसी दूसरे को कोई बुरा भला कहा है और या उसने आपको बुरा भला कहा है और आपके सोशल मीडिया पे बहुत सारे दोस्त यार हैं यूर अ पॉपुलर पर्सन ऑफ सोशल मीडिया जब आप उसको अटैक करते हो तो लाइक बीज ऑल योर फ्रेंड्स कम अराउंड और फिर वो उसकी वो सोशल मीडिया हेजिंग करते हैं कि जिसकी हद हिसाब कोई नहीं आई मीन बट यू नो वो पी वाले और मुस्लिम लीग वाले तो अपनी सियासत ही पूरी इस तरह कर रहे हैं कि मतलब तू पटवारी और तू वट्स अदर फॉर पटवारी जो भी यू नो बन कबाब वगैरह जो भी है सो यू नो आई मीन दे आर दे आर इन वट यू कॉल इट दे आर सॉर्ट ऑफ दे इज नथिंग बट सोशल हेज इंग इच अदर राइट एंड इफ यू गोइंग टू बी जज इन योर ओन केस यू गोइंग टू वॉन्ट टू डू मोर एंड मोर ऑफ दैट इट कैन ऑल्सो हैपन इन अदर इंस्टेंसेज वे यू डोंट हैव एन इम पार्शल जज बट यू हैव लेट से समबडी ऑन सोशल मीडिया um some famous person is attacked on social media but you already have a prejudice against that famous person let's say for example that famous person is black and you're in white america and you're resentful of the fact that uh, michael jackson has become so popular uh, being a black person um there was in fact an fbi did an investigation in which they said that it is likely that michael jackson may be attacked uh because he is a very prominent black individual and because there is the existence of racism in the united states of america therefore we fear that michael jackson may be attacked his reputation may be attacked and so on and so forth uh, and so they did an in- entire investigation on that and um, were the cases against michael jackson uh, for child abuse and so on which were never proven in court but there was an out of court settlement but that doesn't mean he is necessarily guilty maybe he just wanted to stay out of court and so on um does that you know did he do it did he not do it we really don't know um but uh, the 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 possibility also exists that uh, when you are extremely famous and extremely rich that somebody may try to frame you because they think they can get money out of that that also happens right they may try to frame you or they may try and accuse you because the r- result of the publicity may in turn make you a public figure and that may be very good for you so such things can happen and do happen all the time with um, with the uh, uh, what do you call it uh, celebrities and celebrities know about it which is why they become very careful about their privacy and about who they interact with and who they don't interact with so um how do we solve this problem asks john lock civil government is the proper remedy for the inconvenience of the state of nature which must certainly be great where men may be judges in their own cases absolute monarchs are but men where one man commanding a multitude has the liberty to be judge in his own case and may do all his subjects whatever he pleases without the least question or control of those who execute his pleasure so monarchy is a very bad situation says john locke because in a monarchy the monarch has complete control and his word is the law and so in any political situation he becomes the sole judge jury and executioner and out of self love the monarch um will not necessarily somebody asked this question the other day why would the monarch according to hobbes not fall into the trap of doing things that are only beneficial to the monarch so that's exactly locke's argument that a monarch who's completely unchecked there is no check and balance on him out of self love will always think that meri policy theek hai chai asian development bank ye kahe ki agle saal pakistan ki economic growth 2.8% pe slow down ho jayegi mubarak ho aap sab logon ko magar phir bhi monarch ye kahega ki meri muashi policy jo hai na wo theek hai baaki sari muashi policies galat thi even if all evidence points in the opposite direction why we can't help it self love biases us always to side with ourselves think about your own self ki kisi ne aap pe tanqeed ki ho magar aapne aapko bada waqt laga hoga us tanqeed ko qabool karne mein ya think about politics as a whole india aur pakistan ke darmiyan debate ho rahi thi united nations mein pakistan india pe tanqeed kar raha tha aur jo pakistan india pe tanqeed kar raha tha mere khayal mein kafi had tak wo durust baat thi 
اور جو تنقید انڈیا نے پھر پاکستان پہ کی اگر آپ نے وہ سنی ہو تو اس میں چند باتیں سے میں بالکل اتفاق نہیں کرتا مگر اس میں بھی بہت ساری باتیں ایسی تھیں جس کے بارے میں سوچنا پڑے گا اور کہنا پڑے گا کہ یار شاید یہ باتیں درست ہوں کسی دوسرے پہ تنقید کرنا ہمیشہ زیادہ آسان ہے اپنے آپ پہ تنقید کرنا ہمیشہ زیادہ مشکل ہے دس گوز فار اے کنٹری دس گوز فار کمیونٹی اینڈ دس گوز فار دی انڈیویجول ایز ویل وائی ڈز دیٹ ہیپن جان لاک ٹیلز ایس اٹ سیلف لو سو از دا اسٹیٹ آف نیچر ریئل آل پرنسز اینڈ رولرز آف انڈیپینڈنٹ گورمنٹس آر ان اے اسٹیٹ آف نیچر ان دا سینس کہ دی انٹرنیشنل ریلیشنز از لائک ان اے اسٹیٹ آف نیچر بٹ اونلی اے کمپیکٹ آف اے گرین ٹوگیدر میوچولی ٹو اینٹر انٹو ون کمیونٹی اینڈ میک ون باڈی پالیٹک Uh, makes man free uh, from the state of nature. So what we decide is we're going to come together and we are going to make a government and the purpose of government is that you need to have a neutral judge. Somebody needs to judge a case that is not interested in that case one way or another. They are not your friend. There is no conflict of interest. They are not pre-programmed to think because of the color of their skin or because of their gender or because of their uh, uh, race or nationality or language. That's why justice ka symbol is that justice is blind. It doesn't look at who you are. It only weighs the evidence in your favor or against you. And it is supposed to make that judgment impartially without prejudice to against you or prejudice in your favor. And that idea is very much the idea of John Locke. Locke ye kehta hai ke, uh, but he proceeds from there. He says, we have to understand the principle of property. What is property? This has to be understood very clearly. He says, the earth was given to mankind in common. Khuda Ta'ala ne hume zameen jo di, aur ye, uh, ye jo um, uh, kainat jo jis ke andar hum reh rahe hain, ye kisi ek fard ko to nahi di, ya aap jab peda hui thi, to aap ke upar koi saath certificate to nahi tha, jo aap ne saath hi bahar nikala hoka, Dr. Saab, یہ میری زمینیں ہوں گی یہ میری جائیداد ہوگی نو سچ تھنگ ہیپن رائٹ آل دا فروٹس آف نیچر بلانگ ٹو مین کائنڈ ان کامن سیز جان لاک جو کچھ بھی قدرت سے ہمیں ملتا ہے وہ تمام انسانوں کے لیے ہے کسی انسان کی اس پہ اجارہ دھری خدا کی طرف سے نہیں ہے گاڈ ہیز گیون مین ریزن ٹو میک یوز آف دی ارتھ ٹو دا بیسٹ ایڈوانٹیج آف لائف اینڈ کنوینئنس آپ کو عقل خدا تعالیٰ نے دی ہے کس مقصد کے لیے اس مقصد کے لیے کہ آپ اس زندگی میں اپنی زندگی بہتر کریں ایوری مین ہیز پراپرٹی ان از اون پرسن تو سب سے پہلے آپ کا وہ جو فیمنس کہتے ہیں نا میرا جسم میری مرضی دیٹس ایکچولی پری بیڈ ٹرانسلیشن آف مائی باڈی مائی ول بٹ بینگ دیٹ ایز اٹ می فرسٹ اینڈ فار موسٹ یو ہیو یور اون سیلف یو ہیو یور اون باڈی یور مائنڈ ایکسیٹرا اینڈ دیٹ بائی گاڈ بلانگس اونلی ٹو یو Maybe by human actions you become enslaved to others, but God didn't create the institution of slavery. When you were born into this world, you were born free. So that means that every man, woman has property in his own person. The labor of his body and the work of his hands, we may say, are properly his or her. Jo aap apne haathon se mehnat karte hain, wo aap hi ki hai, mehnat hai. Whatever then he removes out of the state that nature had provided and left in, he had mixed his labor with and joined to it something that is his own and thereby makes it his property. Jab aap kudrat se koi cheez jo hai, jab aap kudrat se koi cheez nikalte hain, kudrat se koi cheez develop karte hain, phal jo hai, drakhto se utarte hain, jo zameen hai, uski kashtkari karte hain, to aap apna khun pasina jo hai, اس مٹی کے اندر ملا رہے ہیں آپ اپنی محنت اس مٹی کے اندر ملا رہے ہیں اور جب آپ اپنی کوئی چیز اس مٹی کے اندر ملا رہے ہیں تو اس چیز سے جو چیز پیدا ہو رہی ہے وہ آپ کی ہونی چاہیے کیوں آپ کی ہونی چاہیے کیونکہ آپ کی محنت سے وہ چیز بنی ہے اٹ از فرام یور لیبر اینڈ فرام دا مکسنگ آف یور لیبر ود واٹ ایگزٹ ان نیچر دیٹ دیٹ تھنگ از بین کریٹیڈ ہینس دیٹ تھنگ آٹ ٹو بلانگ ٹو یو ہی سیز لیبر اف دا فرسٹ گیدرنگ میک دیم ناٹ ہیز Nothing else could. جب آپ نے کوئی آم اکٹھا کیا کوئی فروٹ اکٹھا کیا آپ درخت پہ چڑھے آپ نے وہاں سے جا کے پلک کر کے آپ نیچے لے کے آئے تو کس کا ہونا چاہیے یہ میرا دوست کیا نام تھا آپ کا تسمیر تسمیر کہتا ہے نہیں سر 
मुझे नहीं परवाह कि आप दरख्त पे चढ़ के ये आम लेके आए ये आम मेरा होना चाहिए मीठा है मुझे बड़ा पसंद है मगर आप सब कहेंगे नहीं यार तस्मीर भाई ये यार कोई फेर बात नहीं है बेचारे सर चढ़े थे दरख्त पे गिर भी सकते थे हड्डी भी टूट सकती थी इतनी मुश्किल से जाके उन्होंने आम जो है पकड़ा है यार तू जाके खुद अपना आम पकड़ ले वो तेरा होगा अगर हाँ वॉल्टरली सर तुझे आम दे दें तो वो उनकी मर्जी है मगर तुझे छीन के नहीं लेना चाहिए ज़बरदस्ती नहीं लेना चाहिए ये उन्हीं का आम बनता है दैट्स वॉट लॉक इज सेंग लेबा पुट अ डिस्टिंगशन बिटवीन दैम एंड दैट विच वॉज कॉमन यानी जब जिस चीज पर मैंने अपनी मेहनत की है अब वो चीज मेरी होनी चाहिए अब वो कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी नहीं है पहले खुदा तला ने हर चीज कॉमन में बनाई है वो दरिया वो दरख्त वो खूबसूरत पहाड़ वो नदियाँ वो वादियाँ जहाँ पर आप कहते हैं तेरी वादी वादी घूमूँ तेरा कोना कोना चूमूँ वो सब खुदा तला ने आप सबके लिए कॉमन में बनाई है मगर जब उसके अंदर कोई किसी दरख्त में किसी जगह पर आप अपने यहाँ लेबर ऐड करते हैं तो फिर वो चीज़ आपकी बन जानी चाहिए वो फिर कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी नहीं रहती उस पर फिर आपका हक हो जाता है हिज लेबर हैज़ टेकन इट आउट ऑफ द हैंड्स ऑफ नेचर वेर इट वॉज कॉमन एंड बिलोंग इक्वली टू ऑल अर चिल्ड्रन एंड एज दे बाय अप्रोप्रिएटेड इट टू हिमसेल्फ तो उसकी मेहनत की वजह से वो उसकी बन गई बट देर आज देर आर लिमिट्स ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी और ये भी नेचुरल लॉ से निकलते हैं खुदा तला के कानून या कुदरत के कानून से बात निकलती है नथिंग वॉज मेड बाई गॉड फॉर मैन टू स्पॉयल और डिस्ट्रॉय अगर आप किसी चीज पर ऐसी मेहनत कर रहे हैं जिसके नतीजे में वो चीज तबाह और बर्बाद हो रही है तो दैट वुड नॉट बी अ गुड थिंग वी वुड इवन कंसिडर दैट टू बी मेहनत वी वुड कंसिडर दैट टू बी अ डिस्ट्रक्टिव एक्ट इफ समबडी इज गोइंग एंड कटिंग डाउन अ ट्री नॉट फॉर एनी प्रोडक्टिव रीजन और बर्निंग यू नो क्रॉप्स और बर्निंग लैंड और बर्निंग यू नो फॉरेस्ट एक्सेट्रा नॉट फॉर एनी प्रोडक्टिव बट फॉर जस्ट जस्ट फॉर फन देन एवरीबडी विल से कि यार क्या कर रहे हो क्यों ये कुदरत की खूबसूरत चीज़ें जो है वो तबाह बर्बाद कर रहे हो इनको इनका ख्याल करो सो गॉड डिन मेक ऑल दीज ये जो नियमते खुदा तला ने दी हैं ये इस मकसद के लिए तो नहीं दी कि आप उनको तबाह बर्बाद कर दें environmentalists of course that is their argument that we have been destroying nature we have not been taking care of nature as much land as a man tills plants improves cultivates and can use the product of so much ought to be his property he says is his property he by his labor does as it were enclose it from the common so if i say ki ye sari zameen ye 25 murabbe zameen meri hai magar 25 मुरबे ज़मीन पे मैं क्लेम तो कर लेता हूँ मगर उसमें सिर्फ सिर्फ 10 मुरबे ज़मीन जो है मैं यूज़फुली इस्तेमाल करता हूँ बाकी 15 मुरबे हैं ही पड़े हुए हैं उनका मैं कुछ कर ही नहीं पा रहा हूँ वेस्ट हो रहे हैं वो तो व्हाट वुड जॉन लॉक से ही वुड से कि दैट लैंड वॉज नॉट मेड बाई गॉड यू डेंट एड योर लेबर इन इट एंड दैट लैंड वॉज नॉट मेड बाई गॉड टू बी वेस्टेड सो दे फॉर यू नो यू शुड नॉट consider it your property because you have failed to mix your labor into it and you have failed to use it productively god had commanded man to labor and the penury of his condition required it of him penury ka matlab hota hai the poverty of his condition okay we come into this world we are need food clothing and shelter he that subdued tilled and sowed any part thereby annexed to it something that was his property which another had no title to nor could without injury take from him अगर मैंने किसी चीज पे मेहनत की तो वो मेरी बन जाती है वही बात दोबारा नाउ दिस क्रिएट्स द बिगिनिंग ऑफ पॉलिटिकल सोसाइटी द स्टेट इन द स्टेट ऑफ नेचर मेन आर फ्री इक्वल एंड इंडिपेंडेंट एंड इट इज ओनली बाय कंसेंट दैट वी ऑल अग्री to create a political society that means we agree to create a state since the political community is one body made of consent it is necessary the body should move that way whether the greater force carries it which is the consent of the majority kyunki hamare aapas ke consent se hamare aapas ke ittefaq se humne riyasat banayi kyun banayi riyasat is maqsad ke liye banayi ke bhai in the state of nature there is a problem the problem is ke apne case mein we will not be very good judges we need an impartial person an impartial authority to judge in any given dispute between us so we create by consent we say okay we are going to create an institution that is going to judge and arbitrate between us and that is going to be our political society magar kyunki humne apne ittefaq se wo cheez banayi hai kisi ne hum pe force nahi kiya hum uske author hain by social contract humne agree kiya hai therefore the condition also remains ke jo bhi wo kanoon banaye wo kanoon bhi hamare ittefaq se hamare consent se hi bane jisse uski murad ye hai ke majority opinion ought to be 
ऑट टू कैरी द वेट माइनॉरिटी ओपिनियन की बात नहीं सुनी जाए मेजॉरिटी इज़ अथॉरिटी अगर अक्सरियत ये कहती है कि चोरी करना डाका डालना जो है वो जुल्म ज्यादती है तो फिर वही कानून होना चाहिए द एक्ट ऑफ द मेजॉरिटी पास इज फॉर द एक्ट ऑफ द होल ये भी नहीं कि अगर सत्तर फीसद लोग ये कहते हैं कि जी चोरी करना बुरी बात है तीस फीसद लोग कहते हैं कि चोरी करना बुरी बात नहीं है तो ये नहीं होगा कि सत्तर फीसद लोगों के लिए चोरी करना बुरी बात होगी और तीस फीसद लोगों ने क्योंकि अप्रूव ही नहीं किया तो उनके लिए बुरी बात नहीं होगी सबके लिए फिर वो बुरी बात होगी जो मेजोरिटी का व्यू बनेगा वो फिर सोसाइटी का ओवरऑल व्यू बन जाएगा सो दी वी कम अप विदिया ऑफ मेजोरिटी रूल हु सो एवर यूनाइट इन टू कम्यूनिटी मस्ट गिव अप ऑल द पावर नेसेसरी टू द एंड फॉर विच दे यूनाइट इन टू सोसाइटी टू द मेजोरिटी ऑफ द कम्यूनिटी अनलेस दे एक्सप्रेसली एग्रीड इन एनी नंबर ग्रेटर दैन द मेजोरिटी ही सेज जब हम एक कम्यूनिटी बनाते हैं कंसेंट की बुनियाद पर तो जो हमारे जो मेजोरिटी है उसी का ओपिनियन जो है वो कम्यूनिटी का ओपिनियन होगा मगर इस पर भी एतराज़ किया जा सकता है और ख़ास तौर पर दो एतराज़ा किए जा सकते हैं बट हैज़ गवर्नमेंट एवर बिन सेट अप दिस वे क्या हुकूमतें वाकई इस तरह बनी हमने तो ये देखा कि जंग के नतीजे में बनी और तरह से बनी मैन आर बॉर्न दूसरा ऑब्जेक्शन ये हो सकता है कि मैन आर बॉर्न अंडर द प्री एग्जिस्टिंग गवर्नमेंट एंड डो नॉट हैव द लिबर्टी टू बिगिन अ न्यू वन मतलब आपने कोई जब आप अठारह साल के हुए हुई आप तो आपसे किसी ने ये तो नहीं पूछा डू यू अप्रूव द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान ये पूरा आइन पढ़ लें ये कानून पढ़ लें ये पी एल ओ पूरा कानून पढ़ लें क्या आप अप्रूव करते हैं किसी ने आपसे नहीं पूछा आप इस मुल्क में पैदा हो गई और बस मुल्क का कानून था और आपको फॉलो करना पड़ा तो फिर इसके बारे में क्या कहता है लॉ कहता है इंडिविजुअल्स इन द कॉमनवेल्थ आर इग्नोरेंट ऑफ देयर ओन बर्थ इन इन्फ्लुंसिस पहली बात तो ये कि आपको पता ही नहीं आपका आपकी सोसाइटी और जो पॉलिटिकल स्टेट है वो कैसे बना ऑल गवर्नमेंट्स बिगिन विद द सोशल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इवन दो समटाइम्स गवर्नमेंट्स वायलेट दैट सोशल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट मगर शुरुआत हर हुकूमत की एक समाजी माहे से ही होती है पोलिटिकल सोसाइटीज ऑल बिगैन फ्राम अ वॉल्ट्री यूनियन एंड द म्यूचुअल अग्रीमेंट ऑफ मैन फ्रीली एक्टिंग इन देयर चॉइस and their governors and forms of government so if you go back into time you will discover that for every given society john locke says the state began as a voluntary contract and secondly men are naturally free government governments are created by the consent of the people so yes it's true that nobody asked you individually whether you want this or that particular law magar aapki shuruaat jo riyasat ki shuruaat hai wo ek consent ki hi buniyad pe hui hai and this brings us to the idea of the sufficient declaration of consent there is what he says tacit consent you may not have given your explicit consent you may not have said ki yes i approve of all the laws of the government of pakistan but whosoever by inheritance purchases permission or otherwise enjoys any part of the land so annexed to and under the government of that commonwealth must take it with the condition it is under that is of submitting to the government of the commonwealth under whose jurisdiction it is as far forth as any subject of it dekho jab aap paida hue aapne kanoon ka to aapne ye to shayad nahi kanoon pura aur constitution padha magar aapne kuch cheeze inherit ki आपने कोई खरीदो फरोख्त की आपने जो फैसिलिटीज गवर्नमेंट ने आपको बना के दी वो आप बचपन से अच्छी हों या बुरी हों वो आप बचपन से उनको इस्तेमाल तो कर रहे हैं और बिकॉज आप उन चीज़ों को इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं और उस उन कवानीन की वजह से आप उनको इस्तेमाल करने में कामयाब हैं इसका मतलब ये है कि आपने चाहे एक्सप्लिसिटली तो कंसेंट नहीं दी मगर टैसिटली आपने अपनी कंसेंट दे दी है अगर आप को वो चीज़ें वो कानून कबूल नहीं थे तो फिर आपको उन कवानीन के नतीजे में जो फ़वाद थे वो भी नहीं उठाने चाहिए थे जो जब आपने उस सोसाइटी में रह के उन चीज़ों का फ़ायदा उठाया जो इस रियासत ने आपको दी तो आपने टैसिटली जॉन लॉक सेस उस रियासत उस कानून को कंसेंट दे दी अपनी सो इफ इफ अ मैन सेट सेट इज पोजेशन अगर आप समझते हैं कि जी मैं कंसेंट नहीं देना चाहता पाकिस्तान के आइन को मैं इस आइन को दुरुस्त नहीं समझता तो आपको क्या करने की जरूरत है कहता है इफ अ मैन सेट्स अ साइड इज पोजेशन ही इज एट लिबर्टी टू गो एंड इनकोपोरेट हिमसेल्फ इन टू एनी अदर कॉमनवेल्थ और अग्री विद अदर्स टू बिगिन अ न्यू वन एन एनी पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड दे कैन फाइंड फ्री एंड अनपोजेस्ड 
آپ اپنی جائیداد چھوڑ دیں اپنی پراپٹی چھوڑ دیں اور کہیں دیکھیں جی مجھے پاکستان کا قانون نہیں پسند مجھے پاکستان ہونا پاکستانی ہونا نہیں پسند مجھے پاکستان کا آئین نہیں پسند یا انڈیا کا ہے جہاں بھی آپ پیدا ہوئے ہیں تو ٹھیک ہے لوگ کہتا ہے کہ آپ کے پاس یہ رائٹ ہے آپ اپنی جائیداد ساری چھوڑ دیں اور آپ چلے جائیں کیونکہ وہ جائیداد وہ پراپٹی آپ کو ملی ہی ایک سوشل کانٹریکٹ کے نتیجے میں وہ نہ ہوتا تو وہ آپ وہ آپ کی کبھی پراپٹی ہو ہی نہیں سکتی تھی رائٹ سو یو کین لیو یور پوزیشنس اینڈ دین یس یو آر فری ٹو گو اینڈ میک اے سوشل کانٹریکٹ آئی دو وتھ سم ادر گورنمنٹ یو کین سی کہ آئی وانٹ ٹو بی سٹیزن آف کینیڈا اور یو کین ایون اسٹارٹ یور اون گورنمنٹ ان سم پلیس وتھ سم فرینڈس جہاں پہ کوئی کوئی پہلے بندہ نہیں رہتا تو یہ آپ کی مرضی ہے بٹ دا پری کنڈیشن فار دیٹ از کہ وہ آسائش جو کہ آپ کو وہ پرولیجز وہ چیزیں وہ پوزیشنس وہ تمام حقوق وغیرہ وہ تمام چیزیں جو آپ کو اس پرٹیکولر سوشل کانٹریکٹ کے نتیجے میں ملی ہیں ان کو ان سے آپ کو دستبردار ہونا پڑے گا ان کو آپ کو گیو یو ہیو ٹو گیو اپ آن دوز تھنگس So, in this way, consent must be positive engagement and express promise and compact. In other words, uh, John Locke wants us to have a positive engagement with your social contract. You should know the law, you should participate in the law. As, the major, you know, as he says, the majority opinion becomes the law and therefore um, uh, you must participate in the act of governance to make laws, to build laws, to develop laws, to move laws forward. He wants not, he doesn't want you to be passive citizens and just sit at home and say, yes, the law exists, I can't do anything about it. But you are the author of the law and you can change the law, you can change the social contract if the majority of people agree with you. A society that is misgoverned may then, uh, may not then be able to sustain uh, if the state is not really a neutral arbiter the way John Locke envisions it. If it is unable to protect the life and property of people, if it is unable to, to fulfill its purpose, then you will get a situation, uh, if it is not driven by the consent of the majority, but becomes the, the preserve of a, of a super rich elite, as is depicted in the movie, right? So then the situ a situation may emerge that that state will not enjoy any kind of real legitimacy but will become a symbol of hatred. And that's, that's not what Locke wants at all. He wants the state. He thinks that the purpose of government is to create peace, to create safety, and to create the public good for people. And we know this, right? We, we, we talk about this all the time in governance and politics. And when we talk about good governance, we say the state is supposed to be a neutral arbiter. It's supposed to create peace and safety and the public good, etc. So he looks at the various forms of state that exist in his time. Uh, there is perfect democracy, he says, oligarchy, not just in his time, but in history. The perfect democracy, oligarchy, hereditary monarchy, elective monarchy, and mixed forms of government. And he says, by commonwealth, I must be understood all along to me, not a democracy or any form of government, but any independent community which the Latin signified by the word civitas, to which the word best answers in our language is commonwealth, and most properly expresses such a society of men, which community does not, for they may be subordinate communities in a government and city much less. So uh, Locke and Kant and many others writing in this period distinguish between democracy and a republic. And their main argument is for a republic, a society ruled by, uh, by the law. What would be the powers of the commonwealth? The supreme power is, of course, first and foremost to legislate. There remains in the people the supreme power to remove or alter the legislative when they find the legislative act contrary to the trust reposed in them. In other words, you should be able to remove the government if the government is not doing what you wanted it to do. Thus, the community perpetually retains a supreme power, power to the people. The people really have ought to have power in this sort of situation. But this power of the people can never take place till the government be dissolved. While the government is, is present, you cannot exercise that power. But you can change the, the government through elections, etc., in order that it may act in your interest. If all of this sounds awfully familiar to you, it sounds really, really familiar to, to you because this is the way the world, this is the mainstream theory about how government should function. You've all heard this before, right? It's nothing, there's nothing really fundamentally new to that I'm saying over here, I think. Um, and that's because Locke 
it, that shows you how influential Locke has, ha, is in the modern world. Because before he comes about, that's, this is not the conception of government. Allegiance is nothing but obedience according to law, which when he violates, he has no right to obedience. If the state follows the law, if the government follows the law, you are required to be obedient to the law. But if the government does not follow the law, then that is the end of obedience. He has no will, no power, but that of the law. That means the sovereign has no will or power except the will of, and power given to him by the law. Now this makes, this means that executive power is not unchecked as it is in Thomas Hobbes. The executive has a share in legislative power, but is visibly subordinate and accountable to it and may be at pleasure changed and displaced. So the executive of the state, that is the prime minister or president, depending on what kind of system you have, is subordinate to the legislature. The legislature makes a law, the executive implements that, but the executive is always subordinate to the legislature. And if the legislature, the parliament feels that the prime minister is not doing what the parliament has asked it to do, the parliament can change the prime minister. If you feel that you made a prime minister, the prime minister is not doing what you want him to do, what he has been asked to do by the law, the legislature has the right to change the prime minister. Using force upon the people without authority and contrary to the trust put in him that does so is a state of war with the people who have a right to reinstate the legislature, legislative in the exercise of their power. The use of force without authority always puts him that uses it into a state of war as the aggressor and renders them liable to be treated accordingly. In other words, if you overthrow the constitution of Pakistan, if you overthrow the legislature, you tell it to go home, Miss, uh, you are a military dictator, you have taken, you have taken uh, government by force of arms, then you have in fact declared war against society. You are the rebel, you have broken the law, and for breaking the law, you are liable to be punished. This is very radical stuff, people. Um, because once you have a law, you have a constitution, it means that anybody who violates the constitution is committing treason and can be punished accordingly. The power of assembling and dismissing the legislator does not give the executive a superiority over it, but is the trust placed in him for the safety of the people in a case where the uncertainty and variableness of human affairs could not bear a steady fixed rule. So in other words, yes, the executive has the, you know, calls the parliament to session and so on and so forth, but he has no power to dismiss the parliament, to send the parliament back home. In Pakistan there, you can see that we have done this many, many times, sent prime ministers, we've had 27 prime ministers, and um, I'm not sure whether there's any prime minister that has managed even to complete their term. We want fair and equal representation also, says Thomas Hobbes. It is in the interest of the people to have fair and equal representation. Things of this world are in constant flux. flux. Representation becomes very unequal and disproportionate. The people must be represented in proportion and the executive must ensure the rectification of any disorder. In other words, from any given constituency, um, if there are X number of people, then they ought to be an equal number or a proportionate number rather of representatives of those people. Ye nahi hona chahiye ke Karachi mein 10 log hain to wo un 10 logon ke 100 legislatures ho aur kisi pure Balochistan ka ek legislature ho that would not be fair, right? The numbers have to add up, they have to be equal. Um, how can the government be dissolved? It can be dissolved obviously by foreign conquest, that means ke wo, you know, it's been taken over by somebody, some other government. When anyone or more shall take upon them to make laws whom the people have not appointed so to do. Agar koi aisa banda khada ho jata hai kata hai ki mein ek kanun banaunga jisko ke logo ne elect nahi kiya jo logo ka numainda nahi hai so that means government is actually dissolved. Um, they make laws without authority which the people are not therefore bound to obey. Agar kisi ne vote leke wo nahi aya तो उसके पास अथॉरिटी नहीं है कानून बनाने की और आप अगर उस कानून को नहीं फॉलो करते तो इसमें कोई आपकी बुराई नहीं क्योंकि आपने उसको ये राइट ही नहीं दिया था कि वो कानून बनाए 
the people may constitute a new legislative and resist the force of those who without authority would impose anything upon them aapke paas ye bhi haq hai ki aap nayi parliament bana le aap kahe ye to kisi military dictator ki parliament hai kisi badshah ki parliament hai hum isko kabool hi nahi karte ye hamari numainda hai hi nahi if a single person or prince sets up his own authority as arbitrary will in place of the laws which are the will of society so agar प्रिंस या हेड ऑफ स्टेट कोई अपना कानून बना ले जो कि लेजिस्लेटिव से अप्रूव नहीं है वो भी निकाबले कबूल इफ द प्रिंस हिंडर्स द लेजिस्लेटिव फ्रॉम असेंबलिंग इन ड्यू टाइम और फ्रॉम एक्टिंग फ्रीली परसून टू दोज एंड फॉर विच इट वॉज कॉन्स्टिट्यूटेड अगर प्राइम मिनिस्टर प्रिंस प्रेजिडेंट मिलिट्री डिक्टेटर जो है वो पार्लियामेंट को बैठने ना दे सेशन ना करने दे तो फिर भी उसने वायोलेट किया है पार्लियामेंट का सेशन जो है वो इतना जरूरी है इफ द इलेक्टर्स और वे ऑफ इलेक्शंस आर ऑल्टर्ड विदाउट द कंसेंट एंड कॉन्ट्री टू द कॉमन इंटरेस्ट ऑफ द पीपल अगर इलेक्शन uh, का कानून जो है वो लोगों के राय के से, से इख्तलाफ करते हुए तजावज करते हुए उनके जो उन्होंने मैंडेट दिया है उसके खिलाफ जाते हुए इलेक्शन के कानून तब्दील कर दिए जाए तो भी इसका मतलब है गवर्नमेंट इज टेक्निकली डिजॉर्व इफ द पीपल आर डिलीवर फ्रॉम सब्जेक्शन ऑफ फार ऑन पावर इफ द एग्जीक्यूटिव पावर निगलेक्ट एंड एम्बेंड दैट चार्ज सो दैट द लॉज के नो लॉन्गर बी पुट इन एग्जीक्यूशन जहां पे कानून की पासदारी नहीं की जा रही कानून को ओबे नहीं किया जा रहा एग्जीक्यूटिव जो है वो कानून को नाफिज ही नहीं कर रहा वहां पर भी गवर्नमेंट हैज टेक्निकली ब्रोकन डाउन when the legislative or the prince acts contrary to the trust of the people jo humne aitmad unko diya uske khilaf wo chalna shuru kar de tab bhi dissolve if they invade the property of the subject and make themselves master of the lives liberties and fortunes of the people agar wo najaiz tarike se aapki jaydad pe kabu pa le aapko gulam bana le aap pe kabu pa le to ye qatai taur pe qabil e qabool nahi whenever the legislatures endeavor to take away and destroy the property of the people or to reduce them to slavery under arbitrary power they put themselves into a state of war with the people who are thereupon absolved from any further obedience phir aapke poor ye koi mandate nahi hai ki aap unki baat qabool kare agar wo aapki najaiz tarike se aapki property ko chheen rahe aapko gulam banane ki koshish kar rahe if the executive power employs force treasure and offices of the society to corrupt the representatives and gain them to his purpose agar wo legislature ko corrupt kare agar wo legislature ko buy off kare forcefully uske sath koi uska opinion change karne ki koshish kare or openly pre engages the electors and prescribes to the choice such whom he has by solicitations threats promises or otherwise one to his design and employ them to bring in such were promised beforehand what to vote and what to enact agar wo election ke process mein pehle hi wo candidates feel kare field kare aur baki candidates ko eliminate kar de jo uske man pasand ke candidates ho aur wo election ke process ko free and fair election hone na de tab bhi wo government legitimate nahi samjhi jati लोग पूछ रहे हैं उससे कि सरकार ये तो आपने थॉमस हॉब्स ने तो हमें कोई हक ही नहीं दिया था रिपेल करने का थॉमस हॉब्स तो ये कहता था कि मौत के जब कटहरे में खड़े होगे तब शायद तुम्हारे पास ये हक हो कि तुम हुकूमत की बात ना कबूल करो मगर आपने तो बड़ी लंबी फहरिस्त बना दी है जिस जो बड़ी हमें पसंद भी शायद आपको आ रही हो अगर मगर ऑन द वन हैंड आपको पसंद आ रही है मगर ऑन द अदर हैंड आप ये सवाल भी पूछेंगे तो सर इस तरह तो हर वक्त ही लोग जो हैं वो यू नो इनकलाब इनकलाब करते कूकते फिरेंगे तो लॉ क्या जवाब देता है ग्रेट मिस्टेक्स इन द रूलिंग पार्ट मेनी लॉन्ग एंड इनकनवीनियंट लॉज एंड ऑल द स्लिप्स ऑफ ह्यूमन फ्रेलिटी विल बी बोर्न बाय द पीपल विदाउट म्यूटनी और मामा इन अदर वर्ड्स हुकूमतें अक्सर बहुत इस तरह की हरकतें करती हैं मगर लोग जो है ना सब्र से कहते कहते रहते नहीं नहीं ठीक है अभी चांस दो अभी तो सिर्फ एक साल हुआ है कोई मसला नहीं है वगैरह वगैरह मैन बाय एंट्रिंग इनटू सोसाइटी एंड सिविल गवर्नमेंट हैव एक्सक्लूडेड फोर्स एंड इंट्रोड्यूस लॉज फॉर द प्रिजर्वेशन ऑफ प्रॉपर्टी पीस एंड यूनिटी अमंग्स दमसेल्व दोज हु सेट अप फोर्स अगेन इन ऑपोजिशन टू द लॉज डू रिबेल दैट इज ब्रिंग बैक अगेन द स्टेट ऑफ वॉर एंड वी आर द राइट देर फॉर दे इट्स नॉट दैट वी आर द रेबल्स ही सेज वी आर नॉट रेबलिंग अगेंस्ट द स्टेट दे आर द रेबल्स बिकॉज हमने एक कानून बनाया था एक सिस्टम बनाया था और उन्होंने उस पूरे सिस्टम को अपने बुटों तले रोन दिया है तो रेबल हम कम से हुए हम तो सिस्टम को रिस्टोर कर रहे हैं वो कानून जो हमने बनाया था अपने कंसेंट से उसको रिस्टोर कर रहे हैं दे दर इंट्रोड्यूस अ पावर विच द पीपल हैज नॉट ऑथोराइज 
actually introduce a state of war. उन्होंने हमारे खिलाफ जंग कर दी है If any mischief come in such cases, अगर इसके नतीजे में कोई खून खराबा हुआ it is not to be charged upon him who defends his own right, but on him that invades his neighbor. भाई अगर उसने कानून तोड़ा है किसी मिलिट्री डिक्टेटर ने और उसके नतीजे में फसाद हुआ है कहीं पे सोसाइटी में और लोगों की जान मुमाल को ख़तरा हुआ या पीपल गॉट बीटन अप और डाइड एक्सेट्रा किस पे जिम्मेदारी आती है आवाम पे जिम्मेदारी नहीं आती जिम्मेदारी उस मिलिट्री डिक्टेटर पे आती है उस यूजर पर पे आती है या उस प्रिंस पे आती है या उस बंदे पर आती है कि जिसने कानून और आइन तोड़ के जो है वो कब्जा किया है The end of government is the good of mankind. End se murad ye the purpose of government is the good of mankind. The rulers should be sometimes liable to be opposed when they grow exorbitant in the use of their power and employ it for the destruction and not the preservation of the properties of the people. आप कह रहे थे थोड़ी सी एनर्की भी होनी चाहिए. अच्छी बात है. Locke भी ये कह रहा है कि हाँ अगर हकुमतें जो हैं वो corrupt हो जाएं. वो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव गवर्नमेंट्स ना हो वो मेजॉरिटी की विल को प्रूव ना करें वो आ, लूट घसूट की हुकूमतें बन जाएं, वो कानून की पासदारी ना करें वो फोर्स इस्तेमाल करें आपको इंसलेव करें आपके प्रॉपर्टीज़ और ज़िंदगी को महफूज करने के बजाय आपको गैर महफूज कर दें तो ऐसी हुकूमतें या ऐसे फर्द जो कि जिन्होंने हुकूमतों पे कब्जा कर लिया है उन्होंने आपके खिलाफ जंग डिक्लेयर कर दिया है उन्होंने आप सोसाइटी के खिलाफ रेबल किया है और यू आर नॉट लाइबल टू ओबे देयर लॉज इन फैक्ट यू ऑट टू रेबल अगेंस्ट देम यू ऑट टू स्टैंड अप एंड री असर्ट गवर्नमेंट बट इट इज नॉट दैट इज एन एना केस्ट इन देंस दैट ही डज वॉन्ट एनी गवर्नमेंट टू एग्जिस्ट बट ही वॉन्ट्स अ ट्रू रिप्रेजेंटेटिव डेमोक्रेटिक गवर्नमेंट टू एग्जिस्ट बट वो शल जज कौन फैसला करेगा कि हुकूमत ने ठीक किया या नहीं ठीक किया क्या वाकई वो यूज अप कर रही है या नहीं हु शल जज ही सेस द पीपल ऑब्वियसली आवाम ने फैसला करना है आ, लोगों ने फैसला करना है सोसाइटी ने फैसला करना है कि ये हुकूमत जो है वो ठीक चल रही है या नहीं चल रही फॉर हु शाल बी जज वेदर द ट्रस्टीज और डेप्यूटी एक्ट वेल अकॉर्डिंग टू द ट्रस्ट एज रिपोज इन एम बट ही who would who deputes him and must by having deputed him have still the power to discard him when he fails in his trust agar main mere khilaf koi parcha ho jaye mere khilaf koi case ho jaye aur main koi wakil karu ke bhai meri wakalat aap ja ke court mein kare aur wo meri wakalat theek na kare to mere paas ye haq to hai na ye kehne ka ki ye acha wakil nahi tha bhai jaan main isko change kar raha hu bhai thank you very much aap ghar jaye main kisi aur wakil ko lekar aa raha hu mere paas ye right hai na isi tarah aap hukumat ko bhi samjhe hukumat ko हकूमत आपकी वकील है हकूमत को आपने एक ड्यूटी दी है एक काम दिया है एक जिम्मेदारी दी है एक रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी दी है और रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ये दी है हम आपको टैक्स भी अदा करेंगे आपको कोई काम नहीं करना आपको काम ये करना है कि आपको हमारी जान व माल की हिफाजत करनी है और अगर आप उस जान व माल की और और कानून वो बनाना है जो हम हमारे कंसेंट से बने मेजोरिटी की कंसेंट से बने अगर इसके को खिलाफ एक्ट होगा और आवाम ये फैसला करेगी अगर आवाम सो नहीं रही है मेरी आपकी तरह अगर आवाम सो ना रही हो तो आवाम ये फैसला करे कि उठो जागो और ये जो हुकूमत हरकतें कर रही है ये हमारे बनाए हुए कानून के खिलाफ है तो फिर आवाम के पास ये राइट है टू बी द जज द फाइनल जज अबाउट वेदर अ गवर्नमेंट इज ट्रूली बीइंग रिप्रेजेंटेटिव और नॉट इफ दिस बी रीजनेबल फॉर इंडिविजुअल वाई शुड इट बी अदरवाइज इन दैट ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट moment where the welfare of millions is concerned and also where the evil if not prevented is greater and the redress very difficult dear and dangerous jahan pe millions of logon ki wakalat ho rahi ho puri samaj ki wakalat ho rahi ho wahan to aur bhi zaruri hai ki aapke paas ye haq ho ki aap keh sakte hain nahi this person has not done a good job in representing who we are as pakistanis and ought to be replaced if the majority so agrees finally the power that every individual gave the society when he entered into it can never live up to the individual again as long as the society lasts but will always remain in the community because without this can there can be no community no commonwealth which is contrary to the original agreement the final power is always with the community it is a power that we delegate only to the government when my any miscarriage of those in authority uh, this power is forfeited or at the 
um, at the determination of time set, it reverts to society and the people have the right to act as supreme and continue the legislative in themselves or place it in a new form or new hands as they think good. If it has been given for 5 years, then after 5 years ke baad, it reverts back to the community and we will do the election and then we will give someone the right to do it.